Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the east of England into your homes. I just wanted to talk about an efficiency programme. We've got people who are tearing their hair out, um, wondering why there are so the, the, the whole country's in so much disarray, um, why the people at the top don't seem to have any sense in the way that they are administering um, what's going on, the pandemic, or whatever it is, you know. I laugh because, you know, it's very, very difficult. I have a difficult job. You don't know I've got a difficult job, but I have a very, very difficult job. And yes, I lay myself open to attack, to ridicule, all sorts. But I try to get messages across in the best way. And I know my purpose for doing it. And I hope that for those who it applies to, it applies to. For those who it doesn't, you know, it doesn't. You can't please everyone. But, you know, instead of getting all ratty and angry and irritable and throwing your darts at the, at the PC screen, just chill, you know, just chill. Because there's a lot of people out there giving their viewpoints, you know, um, delivering information from their own research, their own experience and for their own reasons. Anyway, an efficiency programme. Um, people who want the vaccine are wondering why it can't be rolled out to everyone. Now, we've got this kind of pseudo-structured um, system on how the vaccine is being deployed. And, you know, people are asking, well, if there's a pandemic and you need to everybody to get vaccinated, why don't you just roll it out to everyone? And what I was thinking of when I'm thinking about this efficiency um, program for the vaccine rollout, I'm trying to think from a basic administrator point of view, because that's my job. I'm an administrator. Why don't they use the um, voting um, venues? You know, like when they have all the voting, instead of having old elderly people driving 45 miles to go and get a vaccine, you know, or for driving 45 minutes, I should say, to get a vaccine, why not set up all of those areas that you use for vote, voting booths? So you've got your churches, you've got your libraries, you've got your schools. You can set up um, vaccination booths outside shops. You can set up vaccination booths inside leisure centres. You know, you can do all of that if you really want to vaccinate people as quickly as possible and as many as possible. Why are you, why is the government making it so difficult? These are the questions. Why is it so difficult for those people who want a vaccine, they have to wait till bloody February. Why is it so, you know, like I said, structured? Everything is done in steps. You know, all you need is we've got massive unemployment. It doesn't take a genius to input data. You put have this relief program go out, you know, like a recruitment drive of um, admin staff, clerical staff, because all they're doing is transferring information from a form onto a computer. And yes, if you're working for the health service, you probably need your DBS, your, your um, what do you call it? your that enhanced um, verification thing to make sure you're not a criminal. But, I mean, they're doing that quicker and quicker. So you get all of these young people, or whatever age they are, all of these unemployed administrators or clerical cards, clerks, you get them in all of these booths that you've set up that everybody is near. Everybody's got a school near them. Everybody's got a church near them. Everybody's got a library near them. Haven't they got a supermarket near them, a GP surgery? Set them all up there. If if what you're saying is true about you want to make sure you vaccinate everyone as quickly as possible. Why just concentrate on this little minority of people, which only makes up 25% of the population, and you're taking so long to do it? And like I said, when I went to the hospital yesterday, there was two administrators. I spoke to a colleague of mine 
to see if it was the same at the hospital she went to. And there were eight administrators inputting the data. So they've got different strokes for different folks, so different ways of doing stuff. So all I'm saying, streamline the process. If what you're saying is true, if you really want the majority, if you really want to achieve um, herd immunity and you want everybody to get the vaccine, use some common sense, which is what people are asking. Why aren't you using common sense? And administer it as efficiently as possible. That's all I'm saying. Um, and make it uniform. You don't have two people in one hospital doing the work and eight people in another. You've got no excuse. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, yeah, they're talking about they're giving it to the over 80s because um, they are the most vulnerable. But they're the ones that are mostly self-isolating. They're not mingling with anyone. So why? I'm not saying waste the vaccine, but you've got young people who need to get the economy running. They need to, they've paid for their university fees. They need to get back to university. You've got kids who need to go back to school. You've got teachers who need to teach. I mean, isn't it common sense? And then people are trying to make sense out of nonsense because it is a load of nonsense when you think about the way it could be rolled out and the way it is being rolled out. It doesn't take a genius to put things in place. And the fact that you put all these big numbers and they're talking about they're hoping to have 2 million a week or something, they could probably get even more if they do it properly and if it's more structured and if they use their resources correctly. But, you know, as usual, the people at the top aren't the people that do the work and they don't know what's going on down the bottom. So it's always the little people that have that have to give the people at the top the ideas but are they listening no they're not listening so what would an efficient an efficient vaccination program look like to get the economy up and running like i said most places are shut down so use them as vaccination booths similar to voting booths churches libraries schools leisure centers outside large supermarkets gp surgeries pharmacies employ unskilled personnel to input data from the COVID application form onto the COVID registration programme for fast turnaround. Our NHS does not have to be overwhelmed. It doesn't have to be overwhelmed with these with this testing. You don't even need the army to do it. You only need the army because you're, you're not using the resources that you have and all these unemployed people to do the admin work, the basic, the basic stuff. So the following questions that people are asking are left unanswered. Does the government want the country to get back to normal in the quickest time frame or not? Is the government deliberately confusing the public by lack of clarity, not making sense, moving the goalpost? Does the government want to achieve herd immunity? And if so, Anyone who wants the vaccine should be able to get it. Why can't it be on a first come, first served so that people can go back to work? Why is the dissemination of the vaccine so controlled? These are the questions that are being asked. And which stage, and why is each stage so structured and engineered? How come close contact footballers are still allowed to play? That's another question. You know, you see them on the TV. They're all, you know, touching each other, hugging each other. Is that because they're having the COVID test twice a week? Like the, the health staff, the health practitioners. Is that, is that why? Because people don't understand. We need to know what's going on. People are pulling their hair out. Because what seems to make sense for a lot of people is not making sense to the, the, the government or the people at the top. And we need to hear numbers of recoveries. I'm sure there are people recovering. Why aren't we hearing those numbers? 
And also, an interesting question that somebody asked me as well. This is another question. What happens if they run out of the Pfizer vaccine? Can they mix vaccines? Is it okay to have the Pfizer vaccine and the Oxford or the Moderna vaccine? What are the contraindications? Will, will, they, will they conflict with each other, in other words? Is, would it be counterproductive? We don't know. They haven't mentioned anything about mixing vaccines. So that's another, another question people are asking. Um, could the second and possibly third jab be a moving target? Because, you know, we want to be fully compliant. Everybody wants to be fully compliant. Everybody just wants to, the, the world to go back to normal, which it never will. Um, but this is in an ideal world for the people who um, want to believe that everything is as it as it as they say it is. They want to know. They want to make sure that when it comes to the second jab, that it is available. I mean, I think at one point they said it's. The next one is 12 weeks and then it was 26 days. And I mean, that seems to be a moving target. Um, the first jab, is it swinging and subsequent um, jabs dodgy? Um, in my father's day, um, they used to have this phrase, oh, swinging, dodgy. So if it was if it was OK, it was swinging. And if it was a bit iffy, it was dodgy. So frustrations, anger, resentment hatred these emotions are coming to the fore because people are just so peed off and there are people out there saying don't you understand what's going on then you understand what's going on don't you understand this is a big pandemic this is a setup this is this this is that this is this and they're getting mad because they're looking at people and thinking they're bloody idiots don't they know what's going on and they're getting themselves all worked up there's no point getting yourself worked up it's no point. So a lot of unhappy people are looking for a target to blame, to incriminate, to implicate, to attack, to subdue. Lots of people are doing that. So this could be a war of the mind, sanity versus insanity, as many of us try to make sense out of nonsense. You know, I'm often telling, you know, people that I am close to, you know, why try to make sense out of nonsense? Because if you're trying to work it out, you're going to go absolutely loopy. You have to just, well, breathe. That's, that's all I'm going to say. 